The first time you're in the space shuttle and you're taking off, you sort of get a little scared. You realize that that one of those space shuttles, it broke up in that fireball. And liftoff of Starliner and Atlas V, carrying two American heroes. You get up into space and you look at the Earth. What do you think? Beyond anything I think that I could have imagined. So when you're in the Starliner and taking off, I mean, that was on television, mm -hmm. and we could see that, and I was, I was scared for you. But <laughs> the, were you scared sitting there? Or what about with the first time you're in the space shuttle and you're taking off? Do you sort of get a little nervous, scared? No fear. No fear? Again, completely comfortable in the fact that my Lord is in control. Mm -hmm. um, I had done all I could do in preparation. You know, like for a football game, you go out, you don't win the game on Sunday if you're not prepared. Right. The preparation is what allows you to win. And it's the same thing in life. I'm going to win into any mission prepared. And if our preparation will be sufficient, and we at NASA, we, we ensure that. We're going to be prepared as we can be. Now, there's those unknown unknowns that you can't prepare for um, specifically, but hopefully your preparation will allow you to handle those unknown unknowns. And sometimes, as we've seen historically, there are some unknown unknowns that you can't, there's nothing you can do. It's completely out of your hands. I can't control what I can't control, and, and I know that. Uh, scripture is very clear about that. And because of that, I, don't, I never went into any of those missions with fear. Even, you know, I flew some missions in combat. When it got to the going into the bad guy country, it was complete confidence that my Lord is sovereign. If it's my time, praise him for it. Thank you for the life you've given me. And I'm looking for those age of ages and uh, what he has prepared. What is that, uh, that verse? Uh, I hath not seen nor ear heard nor entered the heart of man the things Thanks that the that Lord has prepared. prepared for those who mm -hmm. love him. And I do love him. And I love him because he first loved me. And that's kind of a, a focus of mine that has been very beneficial in many challenging situations in my life. So in that... Uh, space shuttle blew up that time, very sad event. Did, yes, did you sort of look at that and think, that could have been me? Oh, yeah, it goes through my mind. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, every time I came back from from space and you're flying through the, the plasma 3,000 degrees and you're inside the fireball, literally, um, you realize that, that one of those space shuttles, uh, it broke up in, in that fireball. And that obviously goes through your mind then. But fear? No, no fear. Um, content, just like I said, wherever the Lord, the Lord has me here, I'm, I'm content. And you know why? I'm not content because of me. It's not because like, hey, you know what, that guy, he's content. I'm only content because I know the word is true. Mm -hmm. The word is God breathed. It is inerrant. It is without error. It comes from a God that cannot make mistakes. And because of that, how weak would my faith be if I didn't believe it? And if I didn't incorporate it into my life and, and believe it to the core of my being, that's not to say I'm perfect. That's not to say that, that I don't make mistakes. Certainly we do. But when it comes to contentment, I may not be happy. I may not be a lot of things, but I, I'm always joyful. My joy comes from the Lord, and I'm always content, and that comes from Him as well. So if you weren't a Christian, things would be very different. Completely different for me, yes. The way I'm wired certainly would. But the, the, word, the word has come alive to me. I've seen it. I've lived it. Um, and not only that, the things that I can't see and I can't live, I still believe by faith. So the first time you get up into space and you look at the earth, what, what do you think? Oh, my. Beyond anything I think that I could have imagined. I'd seen pictures. I'd seen video. Um, nothing equals what you, the Lord has given us with our eyes to see and experience. And it's not just that what you see, I mean, you're in space, you're weightless. Um, you're in a spacecraft that is containing uh, an environmental control system that provides what you need, pressure and, and oxygen to live and to breathe. And taking all of that in, understanding that the Lord is the one who gave us this technology to be able to do these things, um, we credit the Lord for that. He instilled those, that knowledge into man and gave him the ability and when you combine all of that together with the view of the heavens and this earth that he, Isaiah says, he designed and made to be inhabited, 
it's in awe inspiring beyond beyond my ability to honestly relate. I just I can't put it into words. Hey, here's a question a lot of people want to ask you. When you saw the earth, was it round or flat? <laughs> <laughs> I've been asked that. It is round. There's no physics, physical science that supports a flat earth theory. Um, the way the the seasons and the sunrises and sunsets and the moons, you know, uh, you know, encircling our planet and us in the solar system encircling the sun. There's no physical science that supports a flat Earth. And I, to those people that believe that, I say, you know, I'm sorry. I'm not sure what it is you're holding to. Um, a, a round Earth that is truly round and is orbiting a sun, with a moon orbiting it. Um, does not, there's no scripture that contradicts that. So when the scripture says, you know, this truth will be proclaimed to the four corners of the earth, that's symbolic language. We know that. Yeah, and there's, it's, it's that's throughout about the scripture. four quarters. Exactly North, right. South, it's East, not West, saying there's, that there's a corner, you know, and so we, we, we have to, again, we use scripture to interpret scripture. And when you do that, you get the right answer. Well, we talk about uh, historical science, and that's, you know, your beliefs about the past and so on. And scripture gives us uh, the truth there that God has related to us in writing. But then there's observational science and it's you in a spacecraft looking at a round earth. Exactly right. <laughs> and that's observational yes, science. Yes, sir, indeed. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> and that confirms it right there. So could you see the moon as well? Oh, yes, sir. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And it's round too? It is round. <laughs> it is absolutely round. Yes, sir. So, so let me ask you this. So when you're up there, you know, like here, uh, I think of my time in Australia. Australia's my homeland, and we had some friends out in the country on a farm where there's no city lights or anything, mm -hmm. and I used to love to go out there at night and look up, and you see the Milky Way, and right. you see all these stars. Absolutely. Can you see it like that up there You from can. Space? The downside to the space station, though you can maneuver the space station any way you want, mm -hmm. But due to thermal constraints, because uh, the, the, you go to the sun side of the orbit and the dark side of the orbit, and there's pretty dramatic temperature um, deviations as you do that. For thermal constraints, they typically leave the window, which is on this bottom, we'll call it the bottom side relative to the Earth. They typically leave it. They don't turn it upside down where you can see to the heavens. So again, it's an oblique view that we have of the stars, but even with the oblique view, it's amazing. Uh, uh, just more colors than I can even, you, you see some colors from the earth, but the atmosphere um, deteriorates the color somewhat. So there's more colors in the stars. It's just, uh, again, speaks to the magnitude of our Lord. It's amazing. You know, I often think about the fact when you look at the stars, I've had so many people uh, who have said, you know, uh, surely there must be alien life in outer space because you know, there's trillions and trillions of galaxies out there and so on. Surely you can't have trillions of galaxies and so on for, for life without having life in outer space. And I have various biblical arguments as to why that wouldn't make sense from a perspective of, you know, uh, God's son became a member of the one human race, uh, Adam's race, to die for Adam's race. He didn't become the God clean on or anything like that. So right. if the other races of beings out there, they yeah. suffer from the effects of Adam's sin, the whole creation groans. One day the whole universe is going to be wound up and God's going to make a new heavens and new earth and so Peter on. Three. So from that perspective, you know, I don't believe in, in aliens in outer space or anything like that. But, you know, people say, well, well why would God make so many the galaxies and trillions and trillions of them out there. And, and uh, I, I like to think of it this way. Uh, on day four of creation, and, and I love how the King James Version actually puts this. It talks about God making the sun and the moon. Mm -hmm. And then it says, and he made the stars also. He made the stars also. It's yeah. almost like, oh, by the way, I made a few stars for you. Mm -hmm. It's sort of a little, you know, to, a little aside. Oh, yeah, I, I just right. did that. Exactly. And I say, but there's trillions of them, and why did he do that? Barry, I'm sure you know this passage of Scripture. Psalm 19, the heavens declare the glory of God, and the sky above proclaims his handiwork. Amen. Day to day pours out speech, and night to night reveals knowledge. 
he gives the stars their name. One forty oh, yeah. Psalm 147.4. Yeah. I mean, the trillions, gazillions of stars, he knows them all. And he says not one is missing. Not one is missing. And he names all those stars, mm-hmm. trillions of them. He knows all those names. And, and he did that as, oh, I made the stars also. And what it says to me is, this is a little, tiny, itsy bitsy, teeny weeny glimpse of God's infinite power. Absolutely right, I completely agree. If you enjoyed this conversation with Barry Woolmore, I'd love for you to check out the full interview that's streaming now on Answers TV. You can click the link below to start a seven day free trial where you'll get access to our entire conversation plus thousands of other family-friendly shows that are dedicated to glorifying God through educating, entertaining, and inspiring Christians like you and me.